Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Doug Turner and I work for Thor's eLearning Solutions and we specialize in knowledge and learning content for manufacturing industries. Uh, just recently we released a course on threaded fasteners that we're very excited about and today we're going to give you a basic overview of some of the stuff that you can learn in that course and talk a little bit about basic parts of threaded fasteners. Okay, so we're going to start off talking about some very basic fastener parts. Um, and here I have a threaded fastener and what we're going to start looking at is the geometric portion on this side, which was commonly called the head, um, the hex head. This is a hexagon shape. Um, and basically we have six sides here where you can put a wrench or a socket or a ratchet or whatever you're using to tighten. Um, you clamp down on the hex head here. Now for manufacturing purposes or engineering drawing purposes, there are other dimensions that they would look at. For instance, they would look at the head height. Um, they would look at the width across corners, the WAC, that's the difference, the distance from one corner to the other. And then also the WAF, the width across flats. Um, and that's any distance from one flat to the other across. And this is important in any situation because you're gonna need to know that when you're tightening the fastener. Um, from there, uh, we can start looking at beneath the head. Now this is the area where if you're gonna use a washer here, I have some, some washers that fit this fastener. Um, this area is referred to generically as the bearing surface um, or maybe the washer face as well. And a washer face is this portion here where it's, it's flat and it's circular and it protrudes out a little bit and it's meant to um, rest nicely with a washer when put up against there like that. And we'll look at washers here just a little bit more in a minute. Uh, but again, that, that area, that washer face is to provide a wider load bearing surface and stability um, against the material that's being fastened or the parts that are being fastened together. Now from there, we have a smooth portion. This is commonly called a shank, um, sometimes a shoulder or just the non-threaded portion. Um, and this is obviously the area where we don't have threads. Um, so if you are securing material, you have to make sure that your material um, extends past the non-threaded portion. Otherwise, you're gonna run out of room. So if, if it was very thin material that only covered, uh, say, half of this smooth portion, when I went to tighten a nut on this fastener, I wouldn't have enough room. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and then from there, we have the threaded portion. Um, this one has quite a bit of threads to it. And then together, they make up the overall length of the fastener. Now, with fasteners, the way they're measured, it doesn't go from the very top of the point here to the top of the head. That's not the overall length. The overall length is actually considered beneath the head to the end of the point. Um, so basically, all of the parts that are engaged with the material or the parts being fastened together, that's the overall length of a fastener. Now, up here on top of the head, this one, we don't have a drive type in large fasteners like this with a hex um, because you're just gonna be tightening it with a wrench or a socket or whatever. Um, but in a lot of cases with smaller fasteners, um, this is a, a, just a common sheet screw. Um, you'll see this on common wood screws or everyday screws around the home or for your garage. Um, we have a drive type. That's an internal recess there that's meant to be engaged with a tool. Um, usually you see Phillips drives, um, flathead, torques, um, or hexagon, allen head type key things. Um, and again, these are just meant to be engaged with the internal recess and that's how they're tightened. However, for large threaded fasteners like this one, this hex bolt, again, um, we need something larger and we're not gonna have anything to drive in there. We don't have a drive type. So moving along with the threads now, um, there's some portions of the threads that we can point out um, to understand. Now, the tip or the highest portion of these threads is known as the major diameter. Um, that's also called the thread crest. That's the highest point. This is the same as the nominal diameter or the diameter that you would refer to the fastener as. So this is a three quarter inch fastener. So the nominal is three quarters. That also happens to be the major diameter. In most cases, you're not going to reference it as the major diameter, you're just gonna say the three quarter inch bolt. However, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the highest diameter on these threads. The minor diameter is the portion, the lowest portion within the threads, also known as the thread root. Um, and that's down in the middle there. And then the thread flank would be the sides of the threads. Um, so they have the flank, they have the major diameter, and they have the minor diameter down in there. The one that we're mostly concerned with is the major diameter or the nominal diameter, which is three quarter inches. Now from there, we can talk about the point. Um, for a fastener like this, it, this is clearly meant to be engaged with um, another set of threads, a nut. So there's not a whole lot we can do as far as driving this into place. Um, looking back at our sheet screw here, 
we do have a point here that is threaded so this um, can be put into a hole that's already created or um, this can be driven on its own um, it's meant to be done it can be difficult in some cases it's a lot easier to have a pre-drilled hole um, however you can do it um, so we have a threaded point here whereas this one clearly as I said is, is meant to be mated so taking a washer now and putting it up towards the head and then we'd have another washer which is meant to go on the other side of the material that we're fastening together and then we have the nut now the threads on a fastener are referred to as external threads or sometimes called male threads and now when we're looking at a nut this is a standard hex nut it has the same amount of sides as this hex head um, we have internal threads uh, sometimes called female threads and threads on the inside so when those threads are mated they should go on smoothly um, without being stuck. Sometimes you'll have um, a fastener and a nut that are close to being the same size, but not quite. And you can get them started, but you won't get beyond uh, maybe the length of the nut and it starts to get tough. Um, or if the threads are damaged in any way, you're not gonna get very far. Uh, but these clearly work. So we tighten them up a little bit. And here, we would have something where if we were fastening material now and it started to get tighter, we'd have to um, start providing torque. Um, so basically we tighten it as much as we can by hand. We've encountered the material, now we provide some torque, some rotational force to tighten that even more. Now when the, the fastener is oriented this direction, we're looking at a tensile stress or a tensile load. Um, and that's basically a load bearing down along the axis of the fastener. So imagine if we were clamping material together and we had some material wanted to go up and some material wanted to go down. So it's exerting that force and the, the fastener is holding that tensile load um, within the threads. So it's creating tension and it's creating compression within there and it's clamping force. Now, um, a good fastener, a strong fastener, let's just say a hypothetical situation, will be able to withstand maybe 100,000 pounds um, before it fractures. 100,000 pounds of, of tensile force pulling it up and down before it fractured. Now another type of, of load that fasteners will encounter is a shear load. And that's a load going um, the opposite direction as a tensile load. Um, basically, if you're looking at the axis of the fastener, it's perpendicular to that. So imagine we have two layers of material still, and one layer wants to go left, and one layer wants to go right, and they're pulling on the fastener. Um, now the fastener, in most cases, threaded fasteners, won't withstand as much weight in the shear as they will in tensile. Um, there are exceptions, of course. However, so let's say in our hypothetical fastener that fractured at 100,000 pounds under a tensile force, um, under a shear load, maybe 60,000 pounds it can withstand of, again, the two pieces of material pulling it in opposite directions before it fractures. Um, so that's still quite a bit of weight. So those were just some very basic uh, parts of a fastener and some very basic concepts that we went over. Um, we just want to give you a broad overview. If you want to learn more about this, please go to Thors.com. We have just recently released a threaded fastener course. And now we'd cover not only um, some of the stuff I mentioned here, this is just the tip of the iceberg, um, but we talk about the different grading systems. So you'd be able to look at a fastener and identify the grade and how it uh, is, whether it's metric and thread pitch or it's TPI in the standard or imperial system. Um, we talk about the different types of steel that are used for fasteners, gives you an overview of some of those and what's, um, why they are case hardened, which ones are stronger, um, some of the heat treating processes, and the different grades of steel that are used as well. And then we also talk about much more about the mechanical properties, some of the stuff, tensile stress, shear, shear stress, uh, torque, torsion, uh, proof load. Um, we go into a great uh, deal of detail about that as well. And then we also talk about the many different types of fasteners. Um, that are out there. Carriage bolts, elevator bolts, eye bolts, um, set screws, stud bolts, um, and many, many more. And then we cover a variety of nuts and washers as well and describe the best ways to use those. As I mentioned earlier, um, with fasteners, it's, it's um, not so much about the name sometimes because they're going to be named many different things all over the place. It's about how they're applied. Being able to look at a fastener <clears throat> or a nut or a washer and understand, okay, this is the best way that this is to be used. Um, so that's just some of the stuff that we provide in this great course. Uh, and of course, we want to give thanks to Guy Avalon, uh, who is our expert in this course. Um, he has over 30 years experience working professionally with uh, threaded fasteners, 
fastener coatings. Um, he works a lot with failure modes and failure situations, has a great wealth of knowledge on this subject. Um, so we worked with him. So again, go to Thors.com. You can check out more about threaded fasteners or many other industries, castings, engineering drawings. The list goes on and on. We provide educational content for manufacturing sectors. Thank you again. This has been Doug Turner with Thors. Have a great day.